Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a Parisian cafe dress. The dress is barely damp from my panda spin dryer, and you want to lay it out in front of you, sort of line up the seams just so you have an idea of what you're working with. And then this is going to be a geo dress, so you just want to decide where you want to start. And then I'm going to pick up a single layer of fabric and start tying it off with sinew. So with the geodes, I'm pretty new to them, and this is my biggest geode to date. So it takes me a few geodes before I kind of find my rhythm, and that might be the same for you guys. And then there are those of you that have been making these for a long time, and you can just get going really quick. I decided to leave a lot of the tying up process in. I have sped it way up in certain areas. You know, after you watch me tie up one or two, you kind of get the idea of what, what the process is like. Um, but you, you know, you can fast forward. Like if you're an expert, just go ahead and fast forward. But you know, this might be geared more for somebody that's never made a geode before. And you know, if I edit out the whole process, then I just feel like I'm really not being true to the garment. These take a long time. And you know, like I said, this is a big one. And you know, it took me a few hours to just get through the first stages of things. Um, tie dye is not made in 10 minutes. So, you know, uh, get some popcorn and uh, enjoy. So like I mentioned, it takes a few geodes for me to get my rhythm. And if you guys remember watching the scrub top and I was having a lot of trouble with this particular sinew. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the sinew lines to line up. And this particular sinew was, I think, cold from just pulling it right off the front porch. I was excited to show you the new sinew puller that I got from Jen at Boredom with Jen Shop Etsy page. And so it wasn't catching on itself. And with the sinew, being that it resists the dye because it's a wax string, you want it to line up um, on top of itself. That way it creates a nice white line. So sometimes when you pull on it, it doesn't quite catch. You want to make sure that you just unwrap it and rewrap it so that you get that nice overlapping. That way the dye will not creep under it and you get a nice white line. I hope that makes sense. As I work my way down the geode, I ruffle up the fabric, and I learned that from watching Angie over at Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab, and I agree with her completely. If you ruffle up the fabric, it does help create a more organic feel, and I like my geodes to have sort of, um, or just more randomness to them, otherwise you end up getting a bullseye. And if you actually look at my wraps, this one is going to end up looking pretty bullseye because I'm not varying the distance in between the sinew lines. You really do want to do that, unless you want to create bullseyes. You know, it really, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to tie dye. But what you want to do is between your width of sinew lines, you want to go maybe like a couple close together and then, you know, one or two far apart and then one close together and then, you know, three or four far apart. The more random, the better. So this is rayon material and when rayon is wet or damp, it's extremely delicate. So you need to treat it carefully. Now that being said, I am pulling the sinew extremely tight, but I'm not being disrespectful to the dress. You know, I'm not ripping and tearing, I'm just pulling the sinew tight. And right there what you were seeing was the hem of the dress and I needed to decide do I want it on this side of that sinew line or that other side of the sinew line. 
And so I made a decision and then I'm just gonna use a tiny hair like baby rubber band and I'm just going to like cinch it down a little bit just so it's not all loose and all over the place. You know that I'm pulling the sinew tight because my knuckles are turning white. Now you could continue down this entire dress this way, just wrapping one giant single geode. However, the fabric is becoming very thick and I know from experience that saturation is an issue. Whether you rack diet, muck diet, doesn't matter. The thicker the fabric, the harder it is to get that dye in there. So for this dress, I've decided to do multiple geodes. So once you get that first geode tied up, you want to lay out the fabric in front of you and work with it and just let the fabric speak to you. Scoop up another single layer of fabric and tie it off exactly the same way that you did the first one.
So right here, I'm looking for ways that I can branch off and start making more geodes instead of just having single wraps. And you could just break this off into two pieces like they are and work your way on down. But again, the fabric is getting very thick and I don't wanna have a lot of saturation issues. So I'm just working off at making a branch here and then I'm going to try to let each side of this speak to me and figure out where I'm going to make the geodes. Again, keep in mind, the more random, the better. So some of you may be noticing that my sinew puller is becoming empty and I really wanted to try one more sinew wrap. That way I'm not being wasteful, but I wasn't able to make it around. So I've left this part in and I did not speed it up. I literally shifted gears. I grabbed the caddy, I grabbed my drill, I found my Dharma sinew like, I don't know, a week after I started using the brown sinew. I organized myself into a point where I didn't know where anything was anymore, so I'm so glad that I found it. I prefer the Dharma sinew, it's just very sticky and it works nicely, it catches on itself. But anyways, but I just want you to see how easily it is to shift gears. Grab the caddy, grab the drill, get your sinew, and fill it up. Bada boom, bada bang. Just like that, I'm back in action. Now, if I had to hand wind this thing, I would have been sitting there for, I don't know, probably an hour. That was less than a minute, you guys. So I highly recommend that you get the Sydney Puller and Caddy, and I'll mention it again right here. You get it from Boredom with Jen Shop, and you can find it on Etsy. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So I finally made it up to the top of the dress. This right here is the shoulder area and I split them off into two separate geodes, maybe just for a little bit of variety.
right here I'm wrestling with the tag on the dress and I don't recommend that you do that you do run the risk of tearing your fabric I wanted to get it out from underneath the sinew because where you have a tag and if you have it tied down tightly it could create a barrier so you don't get good saturation ultimately I realized that I can't get it loose and I decided to stop pulling on it again this is rayon fabric and when it's wet or damp it is delicate so just you know be mindful We're nearing home stretch. Now you could just continue and go all the way down with one single geode, but again, this fabric is becoming very thick. So I'm trying as much as I possibly can to break it off into smaller bits for saturation reasons. So you just gotta work with your fabric and do whatever feels right to you.
Wow, I had a lot of fun tying that up. I really actually did. Once you get going, you sort of go zen and you just get into the groove of things. So now I wanna mark out my pattern and I'm using multiple washable markers to do so. And it looks kind of crazy, but what I'm doing is I'm marking out a dot on each one of the little nodes. That way I know where I wanna place my color. And you've seen me do these in the past where I just kind of go really random. For this one, I wanna place the die very methodically. So I had tied this dress up before St. Patrick's Day and I was in a really green mode. So I had all my greens out and I was deciding on what color of, you know, like forest green dress I wanted to make. And I needed to move the swatches off to the side so that I could set the tote down. And when I did that, they ended up sitting next to some maroons. And I looked at that color combination and I was just like, wow, that is what I'm going to do to on this dress. So if you guys haven't made yourself swatches yet, I highly recommend it. They're a pain in the neck to make, I'm not going to lie, but having them really makes choosing your color palette so much easier. You can get them out in front of you and you can really sort of get a feel for what is it going to look like in the end. Now, my swatches are liquid dye swatches, but still it's the same color. So I know that I'm gonna have color splits with the ice dye but you know, you get the gist of what it's going to be. So make yourself some swatches. And now I'm just adding the dye to each geode, how I had them marked out with the little dots. And what you can't see off camera is I have the swatches laid out and each pen is laying on top of the swatches. That way I can, you know, look up and I can see like, oh, that blue dot needs to be dark green or whatever. So adding the dye takes a long time for this, but I've left everything in because again, this is a big project and it doesn't go in 10 minutes. Let's talk about the setup. So obviously I'm rack dyeing this one. The reasoning behind that was there's a lot of thick fabric and I felt like I would have more control over rack dyeing it than I would if I was muck dyeing it. I, you know, I don't know if that's the, the right way, but I wanted to try it. And those red things that you see are silicone cake molds that I got from Amazon. And I have a link for them down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So make sure that you check that out. So then I secured it down to a rack with clothespins. And then I realized, oh, I need to put this in a tote. So I need a bigger rack. So I, I had to get out one of my bigger racks and instead of unclose pinning it and all of that, I decided I would just set it down on this rack. And I have the rack propped up with empty die jars. Now make sure if you're going to use your die jars, they're empty. You do not want to be putting water around your full die containers. That's just silly. And that's it.
And then from here on out, I'm just adding some dye, making little touch-ups where I might have forgot one of the dots or needed to add a little bit more. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. Now you want to add your ice, and I like to use the amount of ice that fills up the entire cake mold, best that I can. I think for this first round, uh, my ice machine was being taxed pretty heavy, so I didn't have a lot of ice. And this project is a lot bigger than it looks, you guys. So I did the best that I could. So you put your ice on it, and then you want to come back and check it after the first layer of ice melts. So the first layer of ice is melted and there's a lot of undissolved dye and there is decent saturation on the back but it's not all the way saturated. So I decided that I'm going to add a second layer of dye and more ice. This project is in such a way that flipping it would be difficult. You know in a perfect world maybe you should flip it and add the dye but I just didn't want to. So that's why I'm going with the adding the more dye and then I'm going to add more ice. And for the second round of ice, I shifted gears and I'm using my hexa cubes. My thought process on this is they are more of a dense cube and I was hoping that they would melt slower and more dye would penetrate through. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but I was hoping for that. Once you're satisfied with your saturation, you want to let the project batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. And I'm still doing that because it's cold here in Oregon. During summertime, I might reduce my batch time down to 24 hours, but it's cold and I want to have the most vibrant dye and the most saturation as possible. And you know, the longer you wait, the better. And I'll tell you guys, if you're new to tie dyeing, yeah, it's really super hard to wait. But after a while, you get over it and, you know, you, you're going to have better looking items. You're going to get more out of your dye, have more dye adhering to your project the longer you let it batch. So now it's time for the rinse out and you want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and you want to rinse it really well. And I've done a few of these geodes now and they take a long time to untie. So I figured it out. Rinse them very well and then you can turn your water off and untie it. And then rinse it more with the cold water and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here it goes to the washing machine and I'm washing my rayon items alone or only rayon items together. You don't want to do them with your t-shirts or sweatshirts because you're going to get fuzz on them and that ruins everything. So I do one hot water cycle using Kirillon, and then I do one hot water cycle using Millsoft. And then, depending on what I'm doing, I may put it in the dryer for um, you know a few minutes just to get rid of some of the excess moisture, and then I iron it and we'll see the results. Or just let it hang dry, but it's a lot easier to iron these when they're barely damp. Well, here it is, guys. 
Here's our Parisian cafe dress, geode, ice dye, after it's been washed and ironed. And I think it turned out really pretty. I definitely love this color combination. There are a few areas of slight saturation issues, but I'm, I'm okay with it because sometimes a little bit of a lighter tone can really help the other colors pop. I am in love with the Dances with Raisins and the Black Cherry, two colors I rarely use. And when it comes to the greens, you guys have heard me say this before, I'm clueless. I don't use them very often at all. So this is the first geode that I tied up and you can see how much it just really has a bullseye pattern. And I find that undesirable. Um, only in the fact that it doesn't look very natural like a geode stone. The rest of it I like a lot because it has that really organic feel that I'm always trying to talk about. And again, that bullseye part of it, it's pretty. I mean, do not get me wrong, I love it. But, you know, you wanna be a little more organic with your wraps, like this right here. And I ended up with a really kind of a strange V shape on it. And, you know, I'm not into making those types of tie dyes, at least not yet anyways, but now that I see it, I can't unsee it. And where I have really good saturation, it's, it's beautiful. Like these colors are amazing. And individually, they're also beautiful. Um, avocado is one of those that I don't use very often and I need to use it more. So overall, I'm very pleased with this dress. It's been like the biggest project that I've made to date. And I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. Is it 100% perfect? Maybe not, but it's perfect in my eyes. So what do you guys think? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.